Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we were looking at the dynamic programming module and we'll look at the next problem, which is the longest common subsequence problem. So the problem here is this. So let us say you're given two sequences of say some symbols. Um, before that, so where is this applied? So this is typically applied in what is called computational biology, where uh, you're trying to compare two gene sequences and try to find out whether the two sequences are uh, related or not. So for example, if you want to decide whether uh, the two DNA sequences that you obtain uh, correspond to say uh, a parent and a child, uh, a father and a son or whatever, uh, uh, you could do this testing. And of course, a lot of techniques available uh, under this uh, problem. But uh, what we are going to look at is one of the techniques called the longest common subsequence problem. So the longer the subsequence, which is common to both the sequences, the more likely the two sequences are uh, related to each other. And so if we have some biology background, you might have come across DNA uh, sequences. And uh, so these are like the uh, four sequences, we, uh, four symbols we use there, adenine, thiamine, guanine, cytosine. We'll just refer, refer to them using the first letter A, T, e, G, and C. So it could be this solution could be used for, again, any sequences, not just DNA sequences, any sequences, any two sequences for which you want to find a common alignment. Okay, so let me just use this example and uh, to, I show the idea, then we'll move forward. So let us say, this is one sequence and this is the other sequence. So the LCS, which means the longest common subsequence of X and Y for these two specific sequences is like ATCA. Now you notice that this ATCA need not be contiguously like ATCA one after the other. It could be separated by some other symbols. As long as it's from left to right, so A, T, and then C, A from left to right in X, as well as left to right in Y, A, T, and C, A. Now you could also treat this as your A, this as your T, this as your C, and this as your A. As long as the uh, common subsequence is from left to right, and that's the longest. So you could also say, for example, uh, a T G, uh, not A T G. It could be like uh, G A uh, or G C A if you want. G C A is here. It's of course continuous here, but here it's not continuous. G C A, just G and then C A. So G C A is also a common subsequence for these two sequences, but G C A is of length three, not four. Uh, so what we want to find is something of as long as possible, uh, which is a common subsequence. Again, they need not be continuous in both the sequences. They could be separated in between by some other symbols. As long as it's from left to right, we want that uh, to find such a common subsequence that is the longest. So it's called the longest common subsequence problem. So for these two sequences, X and Y, we cannot find a longest common subsequence of length more than four. This is the longest common subsequence. Now there could be some other combination of symbols again from left to right that could be also of length four, but it, uh, nothing cannot be greater than four. Okay, so that's the optimization. It's like a maximization problem. I want to find the maximum or the longest common subsequence. So uh, again, I just keep focusing on what I'm uh, uh, explaining and uh, things may not be 100% clear right away, but as we keep moving, uh, and again, I'll come back and read codes a few times and it will get clear. And this is being recorded also, so that's good. For today, we have Ryan and uh, it's making us to go online and getting this recorded. Okay. Uh, 
So let us say in general, the X sequence is of length, uh, is of uh, length M, which is from uh, index one to M, and the Y sequence is of length N from index one to N. Uh, so these are the symbols x1, x2 up to xm, and y1, y2 up to yn. So what we eventually want to find is the longest common subsequence of the entire x and the entire y. But you're not going to do that right away. You're going to solve it as on the basis of subproblems, like you always do in dynamic programming. So we're going to find what is the longest common subsequence of, say, i comma j. So this i is, uh, is from one to m. I can, I can do it here itself. So the i will range from one to m, and the j will range from one to n. So eventually what we want to find is LCS of m comma n. That's what we want to find. So when I say LCS of m comma n, it means the longest common subsequence considering x from one to m and y from one to n. So now when I say LCS of i comma j, it means the longest common subsequence of x considered from one to i and uh, y considered from index one to j. Okay, so that's what LCS of i comma j means. So we're going to solve it as on the basis of subproblems. So when we are going to find, so let us say this is your X sequence on the top and uh, uh, here, and then this is your Y sequence uh, written row wise. So we are going to find, solve it as on the basis of sub problems. And so by the time we are about to compute the LCS for I comma J, we would have already solved all the sub problems of smaller size than this size, uh, dimension I comma J. So, Again, we are going to fill it row wise, this, this table. So when we are about to compute this cell, I comma J, we would have computed all the previous rows and uh, all the columns for the previous rows, as well as the current row up to, um, the current row is the ith row up to column J minus one. And you're now in the, will be in a position to compute the value for this cell, I comma J. Uh, so now the, there are two choices. So basically, we now want to compute LCS of i comma j. So where x ranges from one to i and y ranges from one to j. Now, so there are two possibilities. It is the x i equal to y j or x i not equal to y j. So like in this case, we have our, so this is your x sequence on the top. And this is your Y sequence uh, row here. Uh, so now in this case, this is your X I. Uh, so this is cell I comma J, this is your I, uh, index I, and this is your index J. So X I is C, yj is also c so this is a case of xi being equal to yj so this symbol c here for xi is equal to the symbol c here for yj so if that's the case the solution strategy would be if xi equal to yj that's one matching so that's that could be considered as part of the common subsequence and you want to find as large as possible so xi equal to yj will make the length of that common subsequence to be at least one from one to i and one to j. So that we can say one plus. Uh, so since xi equal to yj, what we can do is, let me make a copy of this slide. So what we can do is we can consider the X sequence from one to I minus one and the Y sequence from one to J minus one. So whatever is the longest common subsequence of this X sequence from one to I minus one and one to J minus one plus one 
will give you the length of the longest common sequence from phi to j. So this xi, when xi equals yj, we do a one plus whatever is longest common subsequence of one to i minus one for x and one to j minus one for y. And we would have already solved that here when we are in a position to compute i comma j, we have already solved what is, so this is like finding LCS of i minus one comma j minus one. And LCS of i minus one comma j minus one is in this cell. So this is, um, well, I, I think I've used this alternately. So this, if this is a row, so this should be your i and it should be your j, I'm sorry. So j is for column and i is for row. So this is your i. Uh, so when you are having cell i comma j here, so this is going to be i minus one comma j minus one. This cell over here is going to be cell i minus one comma j minus one. So we, would, we already know a value here. So that value indicates what's the longest common subsequence of x considered. So that should, and this should be your x and y. I'm sorry. So this is your x sequence, and this is I just did this. So this should be your x sequence, and this should be your y sequence. We'll do, of course, several examples. So this is just a motivation example. So x sequence is a row sequence, and y sequence is a column sequence. Uh, so whatever is the longest common subsequence of x from one to i minus one. So this is going to be i minus one. And this is going to be j minus one here. So as I indicate here, if uh, you see this common symbol, so the red color is a common symbol uh, in both xi and yj. So if xi, it, like in this case it is c is equal to yj which is also c then we go to the diagonal left which is this cell so that will be cell i minus one comma j minus one if you're looking at cell i comma j then the diagonal left here will be cell i minus one comma j minus one that will store the value of the longest common subsequence of x considered from one to i minus one and y considered from one to j minus one so that's like this, okay? Uh, if xi equal to yj. So whatever is the common subsequence of x from, so we're looking at trying to find for x from one to the c and the y from one to j, which is this. So if xi, which is the c equal to yj, which is the c, then that's one, matching. So we'll go further to the left and find whatever is the longest common subsequence of the remaining from x to 1 to i minus 1, which is from uh, C-A-G-A-T and Y-A-T-G up to this J minus 1. So that's 1 plus if that's a matching, if xi equal to yj. If xi is not equal to yj, then there are two scenarios. Since xi is not equal to yj, it cannot be a one plus here. So we will either consider x from one to i minus one and y from one to j, and we'll have a length for what's the longest common subsequence from one to i minus one and one to j, j. or we will consider the y from one to j minus one. So we'll skip the j index and just consider y from one to j minus one and consider x completely from one to i. So that will correspond to, so like I have here, if you're in a position to compute i comma j, then the immediate top row will be the i minus one row and the jth column. So like in this case, the two symbols are not matching. Then this is i minus one comma j and this is i comma j minus one. So we'll take the maximum of the two values here and go with that maximum as the value for cell i comma j. So that's the recurrence here. If xi not equal to yj, then the longest common subsequence of i comma j is the maximum of 
the LCS of i comma j minus one or i minus one comma j, which as I show here is a maximum of the immediate top, which is i minus one comma j, and the immediate uh, left, which is i comma j minus one, whatever, whatever the values are. So that will correspond to, like in this case, take off your this slide. Here. Uh, so if it's not C, uh, let us say it is some G. So that means this is some G. So XI, which is C, not equal to YJ. So that means uh, we cannot go the diagonal way. We have to look at the values for these two cells. Let me just uh, highlight those two cells. So I'd look at the value of these two cells. And take the maximum of them. So this cell shows the length of the commons, longest common subsequence from one to i minus one and y from one to j. So that's as I indicate here, i minus one comma j. And this cell indicates the length of the common long, longest common subsequence from x1 to i and the y cell from 1 to j minus 1. So like that means if uh, we are looking at the c and g being not equal to, then that, that's not a matching. So we consider either x from the entire ca So we'll consider the X, and so we're looking at trying to find the longest common subsequence from uh, X1 to I and Y1 to J. Since the C is not equal to G, uh, like in this case, C not equal to G, we will look at trying to find the longest common subsequence of X, we'll keep it as it is, but the Y will go one cell to the left, so ATG, so that is this corresponding to uh, staying with the entire X one to I, so, and the J going one cell to the left, so that's this immediate left. Or the other possibility is to just stay with the Y as it is. So we'll stay with Y from one to J, but the X will go one cell to the left here. So this is X, from one to i minus one and y one to j. So that's this cell. And what is the longest common subsequence between the two possibilities? So we'll take the maximum of these two values and we record that here and keep going. So that's how we'll do this. Uh, so we'll do a few examples and as we go through them, things will be clear, uh, 100%. Uh, so that just feel free to stop anytime if you have any questions. All right, so let us start with this example. Uh, so let us say you're given X and Y. Now, if I don't label the sequence X and Y, it's up to you to choose which are is X and Y. So there's no specific rule to decide which is the X sequence, which is the Y sequence. So as a convention, we'll follow, uh, we'll make the X as the row sequence. So X is going to be the row sequence here. And Y is the column sequence. Is going to be this with the column sequence. Now, to begin with, what we will also do is, as you notice in the formulation, the indexing starts from one. Uh, so, but in the table, we'll have a dummy row and dummy column, uh, and that will illustrate a, a purpose. Let me just make a copy of this. Uh, so you see here, <clears throat> when you draw the table, uh, so even though X uh, like ATGA starts from here and Y starts from here, I've added a dummy row, the first row, top row and a dummy column, the first column here, and I have put everything as zeros. Again, the table is going to record the length of the longest common subsequence between X and Y when X consists from index one to I and Y consists from index one to J for all I and J. So, and you're going to do it as sub problems. So let me just delete this for timing. So you see here, then this, let me put it back on side. 
So the number here, which is what eventually you want to find, the seven here, is actually indicating the length of the longest common subsequence of x from, this is index one, to the entire index m, the, long, uh, the length of x, and the y considered from index one here to n, which is this, say, this index n. So that's what the seven is indicating. So for that matter, any index here, this five basically indicates the length of the common, longest common subsequence of x. So and we can say this five, it indicates the length of the longest common subsequence of x considered from index one to this uh, cell here. And the y from this cell to this cell. So again, trying to reinforce uh, uh, the indexing. So we are going to solve it as sub problems for all combinations. So that's again, this is a combinatorial problem and we'll go row wise. And then by the time we do this last cell, we would have found the length of the longest common subsequence of X from one to the last index and Y from one to the last index here. So now uh, you would have, you could uh, uh, realize that um, when we look at this uh, first row, the top row here, you see I've indicated all zeros here. So that means you're trying to have an empty X. So because you see here, the X does not really exist in this, uh, there's nothing in, uh, for X in this uh, row. X really starts from this next row from A, D, G, and so on. So there's no X uh, symbol in this row. So you can say that is like row zero where there's no X in symbol there. And the Y you run from one to N. So you have only one of the two sequences basically. And the other sequence, which is X sequence is an empty sequence. And it's just a Y sequence that is available. So if one of the two sequences is empty, there's no longest common subsequence of length greater than zero between them. So that's why we record all these cells as zero because we have only one sequence, which is a Y sequence and the X sequence is empty in for this as, uh, as far as this row is concerned. So the length of the longest common subsequence between an empty sequence and Y is all going to be zero irrespective of whatever would be the number of uh, symbols you consider for a Y sequence. Likewise, for this dummy column here, the Y sequence is empty and the X sequence you would consider up to any length from one to M for all those uh, cells, it will be again zero. So it doesn't matter whether X is considered from one to M or one to up to this cell, when Y is empty, there is no Y uh, for this column is concerned then the length of all those longest common subsequences between them is zero, okay? So we need that kind of uh, initial condition to get started and you'll soon realize as we go through the other cells why we need this initialization. Uh, so now let us do row wise, okay? And we'll come to the diagonal thing um, as we encounter them. So let us first, now we are in a position to, let me, yeah, since we are here, so let me do this way. So now we are going to do this uh, first uh, row. I think uh, let me check. Okay, got Rick, are you able to log in to Zoom? Got Rick, can you see the slide? Uh, yes, I can see the slide. Okay. All right, so. Uh, so now when you're doing the first row, it means you're considering X just up to that row. So one to one. 
and the y really so like now we are in a position to do this cell uh, so the x is considered from one to one and the y is also considered from one to one so let me uh, <clears throat> so that's x and y and let me Um, and so you're now also going to compare. So this is our xi and this is your yj. So xi not equal to yj. So if that's the case we need to look at. So that's uh, not matching case. So when xi not equal to yj, according to our recursion, we have to take the maximum of the immediate top, which is uh, x1 to i minus 1 and y1 to j, or the immediate left. So that's why we need those uh, dummy row and column because we have to you know when you're looking at index one, if you have to look at i minus one, we have to we need uh, row zero. Similarly, we need column zero. So we take the maximum of zero and zero, which is zero, and record here as zero because they're not matching. Uh, so now when we're looking at this cell, so that means again we're fixing uh, we're doing only row one, so X is considered only from one to one, whereas now Y is considered from one to two. So up to index two. So that's your J now. So <clears throat> so this is your two. Uh, so Again, so xi is i is one and j is two. So you have to compare xi with yj. So a is equal to a, that's a matching. So if it's a matching, what we have to do is like in the recursion here, that's a matching. So it's increasing the length of the common subsequence by one. And uh, so it's one plus LCS of i minus one comma j minus one. So whatever is the long, length of the longest common, common subsequence is the remaining. So we, that's why we have a diagonal to indicate that that's a matching and we have to go through the diagonal. So I use a brown color here. So it's that whatever is the diagonal left value, which is a zero plus one. So that's one plus the length there. So the zero indicates the length of the longest common subsequence from, uh, for X, basically an empty sequence, uh, like because of the matching, we can say it's X is like nothing, zero to, uh, zero is an empty sequence and y one cell to the left. So that is zero length plus one. So that's why we record here as one. So now we are in a position to compute the next cell here, which is this cell. So that means you're considering x as it is, but y one more cell longer. So that is that makes it like index three. So x from one to one and y one to three. So you're comparing this A with the C, that's not a matching. So we'll take the maximum of the immediate top, which is zero and the immediate left, which is a one. So this one, so maximum of zero and one is one and we record that here. So whenever there's no matching between the last two symbols, this is xi and this is your yj, then take the maximum of the immediate top and left and record that value here. Then the next cell, uh, X pro uh, here. So this is means we are constrained now. Xi is A and Yj is T and A is not equal to T. So that's again, not a matching. So we'll take the maximum of the immediate top zero and this one to the left and record that value here. So this is going to be a one. And now for the next cell here, Uh, so that means you're looking at X, I as A and Y, J also as A. So A is same as A, that's a matching, which corresponds to this scenario. So that means we have to go to the diagonal. Let 
me draw the diagonal here. So the diagonal left, which will correspond to x of 1 to i minus 1 and y 1 to j minus 1, that's this cell, plus a 1. So whatever the value there, in this case, it's a 0 plus 1. So that makes it 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And now, again, for this one, again, a is equal to a. So we have to consider it as a matching. So whatever is in the diagonal left, which in this case, it's a 0 plus 1. So that will make it a 1. Then we'll go to this cell here. Now here we have a and x i is a, y j is t. a and t are not the same. That's a mismatch. So that means you have to take the maximum of the immediate top and the immediate left, which is zero and one, and maximum is one. And then the last uh, cell is going to be like a and a. That's matching x i equals y j. So again. Then we have to go to the diagonal left. For the diagonal left, we have a zero there, and we can now write zero plus one as one. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so now we are in a position to compute the next uh, row. Let me delete all this. Okay. Uh, so that means our x index has been increased by one. So now we're looking at x from index one to two. So basically, you're looking at xi as t. And depending on where we are in the column, y runs from one to that particular index j. So when looking at this cell, it means x consists from one to two and y consists from one to one. So the last index is our i index and the last index is the j index, which is i, uh, i is two and j is one. So comparing the two symbols, you have t and g. t and g are not the same. So we have to, that's a mismatch scenario. So that means, let me call it as mismatch. That's more appropriate to call terminology. Um, so it's not matching, basically that's what it is. You take the maximum of the immediate top and the immediate left. So maximum of zero and zero is zero, which is zero. So now for the next cell means you're considering again X as it is from A to T and y g to a. So now we have to take the compare this t with the a. t and a are not the same, so it's again a mismatch. So you have to take the maximum of the immediate top one and the immediate left, which is a zero. So that's going to be a one. So that's all it is. So just check whether it's a matching or not matching. Then, so if you're looking at this cell here, that means you're looking at again x as it is, but y going one cell to the right. So comparing T and C again, not matching. So take the maximum of the immediate top one and the immediate left one, which is a one. So you see the reason for that, as I said, if they're not matching, then whatever is the best when we consider uh, Y. Uh, so keeping the X as it is and just go one cell to the left, G to A, and that is this cell. That value is recorded here. And the other possibility is keep the y as it is, but go the x one cell less. So that will the length of the longest common subsequence of such a cell will be recorded here. And we take the maximum of these two and record that here. Okay. If it's matching, then uh, It's matching, so something like the next cell we have, coincidentally. So you see here now that we are in a position to compute the value here. So now the corresponding row and column cells, you have T here and a T here, so that's a matching. So that means that's a, a 
that will so a matching case will increase the length by one so we can say it is one plus uh so that's one plus so we have to go to the uh, we have to go to the left for both the sequences because that's the last two symbols are matching so we have to go one cell less to in both x and y and that will correspond to as i show here the diagonal left so the length of the longest common subsequence of x from one to one and y from one to three is going to be this cell here so there's already a one here plus the one because of the matching t and t so that's going to make it two so whatever is a the value there add a one to that value so that will make the length of the longest common subsequence of two xi and yj and now you keep doing this now a, t and a are the next two things you're going to compare for this cell t xi is t yj is a uh, so that's not a matching uh, so we have to take the maximum of one and two so maximum of one and two is a two now then go one cell to the right so compare T with A again not a matching so take the maximum of the immediate top and left so it's one and two so maximum is two now you have for this cell you're comparing T with T that's a matching so go to the diagonal which is this diagonal here and uh, see what's the value there. So already you have a one, so one plus one. Uh, so that will make it two. Then last cell here is going to be T compared with A. That's not a matching. So take the maximum of one and two. The so maximum of one and two is two. Okay, so that's how you do this. So you can keep doing this for every row. So we'll do one more row and then faster all right so now we are looking at x from one to three so uh, i is three now and looking at j uh, y from one to one so that's j is index one so comparing uh, x i which is g and y j is also g that's a matching so we have to go to the diagonal left so the diagonal left is going to be this value here this entry is a zero so zero plus one plus zero basically so one plus what is the diagonal left so we have zero on the diagonal left so one plus that value is one one plus zero is one so then in, uh, move the y to the next index here so we are comparing g with a that's not a matching so take the maximum of the immediate top one and the immediate left which is a one so that makes it one and then move to the next cell. So comparing G with the C, not matching. So maximum of immediate top one and the immediate left one, which is a one. So you can record this as one. And then uh, move to the next cell. This is G with the T, again, not a matching. So maximum of immediate top, which is two and the immediate left, which is one. So the maximum is two. And then you can keep going and uh, you don't have a g at all here so for each case you have to take the maximum of the immediate top and left so maximum of two and two is two so you can just record as two and again t uh, so you have a g and this is a so again maximum of two and two is a two here and then you have uh, t and g not the same so maximum of immediate top two left two is also two and a 
with G not the same. Uh, so maximum of immediate top two and this two is two. So I can keep doing that and go build this entire table. And so the number here, so the number seven here indicates the length of the longest common subsequence of X concert from one to M, the entire X sequence, and the Y concert from one to N, the entire Y sequence. So that's giving you the length. And we'll, we are also interested, so for example, in this case, if we do the math here, it's going to get four because that's these are the two X and Y sequences. So that's going to be four that will be recorded in this table. So now we also want to find out what is that common longest common subsequence, uh, which is having the longest length, four. So we have to be able to uh, extract this ATCA, like in this case, from this table. And that's what we're going to do here. What is the longest common subsequence of length uh, seven uh, between these two sequences, X and Y? So we'll be extracting that now. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so now stay focused on this part, how we do this extraction. Okay, uh, let me copy this slide. Okay, all right, so, uh, Okay, uh, I will use a uh, text editor. Sequence. Okay, let me type my X. So let's just assume X is the top first sequence and the Y is the next sequence. This that can. And the Y. As G All right. So we'll start from the bottom row, uh, bottom right seven, and then go backwards. So the thing is how we came to this cell. And we recorded whenever there's a matching with a, sl uh, with a slanted line or slanting line, to indicate we came from the left diagonal. That means the corresponding X symbol matched with the corresponding uh, Y symbol here. So that's what, uh, that's how we, that's why we came from the diagonal left. Uh, so that clearly indicates that the X symbol, which is this A matched with the Y symbol here, which is also A. So that's why you came from the diagonal left. So from here, we can go to that cell where we came from. And this A kind of matched with this A. So in the alignment, what we can do is, we can align this, let me, okay, so we can align this A with A, the last symbol in the two sequences, the A with the A. Uh, so now we are here in this uh, where the six is and how we came to this cell. Now you don't have a diagonal line here. So that means this symbol, the row symbol in this does not match with the corresponding column symbol, which is T. A and T are not matching for this particular. So we're currently in this, uh, let me hide it. So we're currently here. So the row symbol A does not match with the column symbol T. So if there's a mismatch, we take the maximum of the immediate top and the immediate left. 
and that's the value we record here. So uh, in this case, both the immediate top and left are the same, six and six. So that's a tie. You can break the tie arbitrarily. So just to follow a convention, we'll break the tie by going up. So that means we assume that we got the six from the top cell. So we can go to that cell where we uh, took the six from. So we are no longer in this cell. Uh, we have moved to this cell. So like you can say tracing backwards the solution. So you're now in this cell. So now you see here, we kind of are still in the same column where the T is, we are still in the same column, but we skipped this row and we went, we skipped this row, uh, this row uh, and went to the previous row. So we have to show that in this alignment that you're going to develop here. So uh, what we have to do is we are still in the Y uh, column corresponding to T, but uh, X we are uh, skipping this A and moving on to this row corresponding to T. So we have to match if there's no alignment between like A and T. So we are retaining this column, but are skipping this cell. So whenever you're skipping a cell, in this case, you're skipping the row cell symbol, we have to align that symbol with the gap. So this a hyphen is called the gap. That means nothing. Uh, so the X, symbol A that we are skipping here uh, has to be aligned with a gap uh, uh, because it's not really matched with any Y symbol. It's aligned with a gap. Uh, so that's what we have to do. When you're skipping a row, we have to align that row symbol with a gap. If you're skipping a column, we have to align the column symbol with the gap. And we'll do that depending on the case. So right now we are in this cell. So the row symbol corresponding to that cell is T and the corresponding column symbol is also T. So that means that they're matching and that's what the diagonal here indicates. So we really came from the diagonal. So we uh, can move on to that cell here. So we move the highlight on this cell and we are right now uh, in this cell. So we have to show that, that alignment, that mapping or matching of T and T, and we can do that by just adjusting. So this like you do it like as I'm doing. Uh, so eventually you want to bring the alignment between them like this. So even though X and Y of different length, they need the alignment should be uh, uh, kind of of same length between the two of between the two sequences. And that's what we're going to build as we do go through this process. So the T is aligned with the T and that's what here we are indicating here. So now we are in this uh, cell. So the row symbol here is A and the column symbol is also A. That's a matching and you can double confirm it by the presence of the diagonal. So uh, we are ready to move on from this cell and go to the diagonal left. So you can remove the highlight on that cell and we are now in this cell. Uh, so that means the A matching with the A. Uh, so we can show that by aligning the A with A. Uh, so right now we are here. So now the T, the row symbol does not match with the column symbol A. So if there's not a matching, we take the maximum of the immediate top, which is three and the immediate left, which is a four. So in this case, the left cell is the maximum. So we got that four really from this left cell here. So we have to go to that cell where we took that four from. So that means if you see here, we are retaining uh, this row cell symbol, but skipping this column you are moving one column to the left, but still in the same row. So for the X, we are in the same X row, but for the Y, we are skipping a column and moving to the previous column. So how we show that here is, so we are skipping the Y in this case. So that means uh, we are still in the 
X, the T symbol. So let me show it like this. And this A So the A in the Y sequence, this A here in the Y sequence, this A here corresponding to this cell is being skipped and we are going to this cell symbol. So we have to show that by aligning the A in the Y with the gap. So the A in the Y here, which I'm showing here is aligned with the gap because of skipping that symbol and going to the left. It's not aligned with any symbol in the X sequence. So that's how we have to do that. Now, skipping a column symbol, align that column symbol, in this case, the A with a gap. So now we are in this uh, cell. So we have to highlight this cell. And that's it. So here you can see a diagonal left. That means there was a matching. So, and you can verify that this T here matches with this T here. So we can go to the diagonal left and we have to show that here with alignment. So that T here, you can see was matching with the T. So, you know, if you're doing a paper, you can erase it back and forth and uh, do this. Or if you're doing computer, that's why I'm showing an editor, how you can uh, keep updating the alignment. So the T matches with the T and aligns. So matching or alignment, they mean the same, aligns with the T. And so now we are in this uh, diagonal left cell. So we can highlight that. Let me remove the highlight on this cell. And we can highlight this cell. Just to keep track of where we are, That's nothing much. So now you can see again a diagonal left it's a line. So that means the corresponding row symbol C matches with the corresponding column symbol C. So we can show that by aligning the C with the C, this C here. And we can uh, draw the arrow to move on to this cell. And so we are no longer in that cell. So let me highlight this. And we can remove the highlight from this one. So we are in this cell. Again, you see a diagonal uh, left. So that means the corresponding row symbol A matches with the column symbol A. And we can show that as an alignment here. So everything will be, you know, coincidental. Like you can see that matching. You don't have to do anything. If the two symbols are matching, just move that A align with this A here. And so we are ready to go to the diagonal left. So remove the highlight on this cell and we are now in this cell. And uh, you can see the, again, that diagonal line. So that means the row symbol G is matching with the column symbol G. So we can show that by aligning this G here with that G there. Uh, so again, we have diagonal left line. So that means we, can go to this cell. We are done with that cell. We are now here. So now, once you reach this, um, what you call the uh, leftmost column in this case, there's nothing further to go to the left. So basically, you are done with the Y sequence. As you can cross check uh, in the alignment, you are done with the Y sequence. There's no more symbol in the Y sequence to consider. And that's what you should see. You know, everything should be uh, corresponding to each other. So that means the symbols A and T in the X sequence have to be just aligned with the gap. And that will correspond to like how we got here because there's nothing uh, in the Y sequence. So we just wrote all zeros. That means uh, it's like A and T, you just have to go up. There's nothing to compare with the left. We have to just take the top value and keep going to the top and go to the starting point. So that will correspond to aligning the T with a gap and the A also with a gap. So this is the alignment between X and Y. And wherever there is a matching, you write down that 
those corresponding symbols. So G A C T, that's a matching. Then followed by this A and T, that's a matching. Followed by this A here, that's a matching. And you see the length of this common. So that's the common subsequence. And this is the longest common subsequence between X and Y, and it's of length seven, which will match correspond to this number seven here. So the length of the longest common subsequence that you be extracting from this alignment should match with what is here, the bottom right value. So this is how we'll be extracting the uh, uh, what we call the longest common subsequence and showing the alignment um, by introducing the gap symbol wherever needed. So actually, they should be of the same dimension. So this is where uh, the DNA testing uh, application, uh, the uh, significance comes. So if two people are related to each other, then uh, you will introduce as few gap symbols as needed, and uh, they'll be very aligned to each other. So the longest common subsequence will be really longer and almost close to the length of the maximum of the length of either of them, actually the minimum of the length of either of them. You cannot, you can notice that the length of the uh, longest common subsequence has to be less than or equal to the minimum of the length of x and y. It cannot be more than the length, uh, max, uh, like the length of any of them. So it cannot. And you can also cross check your solution based on that. Like the minimum of the length of X and Y in this case is the length of Y, which is eight symbols. So the length of the longest common subsequence you determine here cannot be more than eight. At most, it can be eight. Okay, it makes sense because uh, you don't have a, the Y beyond eight symbols. So you cannot report uh, an answer here greater than eight. Okay. Uh, so if two people are related, the length of the longest common subsequence will be very close to the minimum of the length of X and Y. Um, and uh, the alignment will have as few gaps as uh, 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 possible. Okay, any question on this? We'll do one more example and... Um, All right, so time to do the second example and then we can stop. Um, okay, so one more thing before we go to one more example. So this optimal substructure property, as I was talking about for any dynamic programming solution is also applicable here. So what it means is like in this example we worked out, the original X and Y are this. So let us say now I come back and want to find the longest common subsequence of X prime and Y prime, where X prime, again, we start from one. And so going all the way to the end, I want to say, uh, this is my uh, sequence X prime. And again, Y prime starting from the first symbol. You cannot like start arbitrarily. Like you cannot say, I want to find the longest common subsequence of G, A, C, T, A with something here, no. So we have to always start from the first index, but at the end, uh, we can end at any index you want. Uh, and then similarly, Y prime, start from the first index and go up to here. So that's what I'm showing here. So if you want to find the longest common subsequence of X prime and Y prime even like this, you don't need to redo this table. Just, uh, so this is the table that we got. So uh, X prime, you can just go up to A, up to this T, and the Y prime can go up to this A. And the value recorded here, which is phi, is the length of the longest common subsequence between this X prime and Y prime. And then we can go through the alignment process, similar to what we did, and find the alignment. And that will be like in this case, G, A, C, T, A. Okay. And you notice in both cases, the alignment need not be like contiguous symbols. Like we had G, A, C, T, E, followed by, you know, uh, uh, see this A, we don't have this A retained in the alignment because this A here is aligned with the gap. So D, A, C, T followed by this A and T really comes from this A, T. And then this A here is really aligned with the gap. So this last A here really comes from this A. That's aligned with that A there. So 
they need not be contiguous. Uh, they can be like this, where uh, some of the symbols are skipped. That means skipped means, like as I said, they are aligned with a gap. Okay. So let us do a second example. Um, I think that will really make everything uh, uh, hundred percent uh, clear. All right. So again, if I don't specify x and y, it's up to you to choose uh, one of the sequences as x and the other one as y. Uh, then, so let us say now, uh, actually, I chose this as my y, this is x. So the row sequence, we can keep for clarity, that's your x sequence. So this is your row sequence here, the x sequence, and the y sequence is a column sequence. So, okay, so now, as I said, we'll introduce a dummy row and dummy column with all zeros, and you all know the purpose of it. Uh, that means, uh, so everything in this row takes a week as one to aligning this column sequence, the Y sequence, with an empty sequence for the row. There's nothing here for the row. So, trying to find the long, so this zero really indicates the length of the longest common subsequence of TGAC. Uh, compared with an empty sequence. So that means it's zero. So this zero really means the length of the longest common subsequence of this entire Y sequence with an empty sequence for the X. Similarly, the column. Uh, so this zero really indicates the length of the longest common subsequence of X considered fully, but Y considers an empty sequence. So we can do it pro-wise. Uh, <clears throat> Let me make a copy of this. Okay. Let me try to remove all the planting lines. Okay, so now we're going to fill this row um, where we're looking at uh, X just as A and uh, uh, the Y we're looking at uh, the entire column starting from the first symbol. Okay, so now A and T not matching. So we just take the maximum of immediate top and the immediate left. So that's zero and zero, the maximum is zero. Then we are fixing the X and moving the Y sequence. So now we're comparing the G with A. G and A again are not matching. So we take the maximum of the zero here and the zero here, which is zero. And then we move to this cell. Uh, so A and A are matching. So that means we should come from the diagonal. So whatever is the diagonal left, so it is uh, it's a zero plus a one, because that plus one is due to the matching. So zero plus one is one. And then we'll move to the next cell here. The A compared to C is not a matching. So take the maximum of this zero and one, which is one. And then want this cell, which is the T compared with A, it's not matching. So maximum of this zero plus one, which is the one. And move to this cell. So A and A matching. So if we take the, go to the diagonal left, so you can draw that slanting line to indicate, as you know by now, to trace back the solution, these lines will be useful. Uh, so the zero there plus one, that's a one. And then, we go to the C here, so A and C not matching, so maximum of zero and one is one. So now we expand the X by one cell. It means now we are ready to do a row corresponding to a C, and then the Y increase cell by cell, so column by column. So the C and T not matching, so we take the maximum of the zero on the top and zero on the left, which is zero. Then 
increase the uh, expand the x y by one cell so the g with the c not matching so maximum of zero and zero is zero and then uh, so now a with c not matching so maximum of one and zero is a one then c and c that's a matching so that means this comes from the diagonal left so whatever is there the diagonal left one plus a one so that's two then uh, this t compared with c not matching so maximum of one and two is two immediate top and immediate left then c and a not matching so again the maximum of one and two the immediate top and left is two then c and c is matching uh, so that means we come from the diagonal left one plus one so that makes it a two so you can do that for every row and so by the time we do the last row uh, the number the number we get there uh, in this case five corresponds to length of the long ones common subsequence for the entire x from the top to bottom and the y the all the columns one, one two yeah. Yeah. So let us now uh, trace back the solution. I think that is uh, what, what would be not 100% clear. Uh, so let us use this uh, result here and trace back the solution. So again, stay focused. We'll do the alignment. So our X say is this sequence A, C, D, Y is say D, G. Initially, they need not be aligned. We are going to make them aligned. Okay. So we'll start with the bottom right. So this five, and you can see a diagonal. So immediately you can go to where we come from. That means that symbol, uh, we move, uh, we come from there because the C here matches with the C here. So we do a four plus one, that's why I got that five. Uh, so that means this C can be now match with this C here. So we are now here, with this four, and you can notice there's no diagonal line to the cell. That means the row symbol, which is a G here, is not matching with this column symbol a here so we have to come from the maximum of the immediate top which is four and the immediate left which is also four so that's why we just go four so to break the tie we uh, move up uh, so we go up to break the tie so that means you're skipping this row symbol g and going to the previous row symbol but retaining the column symbol a so in the alignment, what we should do is, so skipping in the X symbol G and going to the previous one. So the G in the X is aligned with the gap because it's not, it's being skipped. The G in the X that I'm highlighting here is being skipped. And that means it's not matched with any symbol in the Y. So you have to show, match it with a gap, okay? So right now we are here at this four and again, we don't have a diagonal line. So that means the corresponding row symbol T will not be matching with the column symbol A. So again, we have to decide whether to come from the top or left. So we have four and four on the top and left. So we break the tie in favor of the top. So we'll go to the top. So that means we are again skipping a row symbol, uh, which is in this case the T and going to the previous row symbol. So it's still on the column symbol A. So the row T is being skipped. So how we can show that is move it a little forward and move this also forward. So this is what we had previously. And now we can align the rows uh, symbol, which is the X symbol T with the gap. Uh, and now we are here and we see a diagonal line at this cell. So that means we have come to this, from this because of a matching and we can cross check. The A here is matching with the A here. And we can also cross check that here. So the A in the X is matching with the A. So you make sure to move this back so they're aligned. So the A and A are matching. So we are now here 
and you don't see a diagonal line, so the corresponding row symbol G is not matching with the column symbol T. So we have to take the maximum of the immediate top and the immediate left. So maximum of three and two is three. So we got this three by coming from the top. So now we go to the top. So that means again skipping the row symbol here. In this case, the G is being skipped and retaining the column still there. So the G in the row is being skipped. So you can G is in the row, the X sequence is aligned with the gap. And then we are now here, we see a diagonal line. So that means the row symbol here, T matches with the column symbol T. And we can also cross check that here. This T is being matching with this T. And if we back that, uh, so we are now here, we again see a diagonal line to the left, so we can draw the diagonal line, that means the symbol C here, the row matches with the C in the column, so that means the C matches with the C, and uh, we are right now here. And again, we see a diagonal uh, to the left, so we can. Now, one second, Irma. So the row symbol A matches with this column symbol A. So we can show the matching here, like this alignment. Uh, so right now, we have reached the topmost row. So that means you're done with the X sequence and you can cross check that you're done with the X sequence. So you don't have anything in the X sequence. So all you have to do is skip both Y symbols and go to the left. So that means the symbols, uh, that means the symbols G and T in the Y sequence will be aligned with the gap. That's what we're going to do here, the symbols Y and T and G, the Y sequence will be aligned with the gap. And that's the alignment between the two sequences. Uh, okay, so now we can check uh, the longest common subsequence is like wherever there's a matching. So it's like A, C, T, that's like they're matching here. And then this A here, that's a matching. So that's A. And then the C here, that's a matching. That's a C. So this is of length five corresponding to this five. So you can cross check again. Now, is this the only longest common subsequence between these two sequences of length five? No. So you see, we broke the tie by going up. So if you break the tie by going to the left, you may get some other sequence of length five. So that's also okay. So depending on how you break the tie, you could come up with some other longest common subsequence of length five. But as I said, uh, we cannot go beyond five. So five is the length of any longest common subsequence between these two sequences. And if you break the tie arbitrarily, like sometimes going up and sometimes going left, that's also okay. So you can break the tie even arbitrarily. So that could lead you to even uh, like a third longest common subsequence of length five between the two sequences. So it is definitely possible. So an exam, I could ask some students to break the tie by going up and some students I ask that I can ask to break the tie by going left. So if I could give the same sequence, but uh, if I ask them to break the tie differently, then you have to follow the instruction and break the tie accordingly. And if I say you can break the tie arbitrarily, that means sometimes you have to break the tie by going top, so you can do it alternately. So the first time you get a tie, you can go up. Second time you get a tie, you can go left. And third time you get a tie, you can go up and then left and so on. So also, as I said, as a complete question, I could ask you also, given this original X and Y, and then give you some X prime and Y prime that start from the first index, but doesn't go all the way to the end. They may stop somewhere uh, in, the, in the middle and ask you to find the length of the longest common subsequence between them, as well as the alignment, then you should be able to do both. So like uh, the, whatever they are meeting, that's the length four in this case. Uh, and then you can trace back from that cell all the way to the top and uh, 
record alignment like we did for the previous two cases. Okay, so I'll stop this. I have a third example, which I encourage you to go through and practice before you meet. Uh, I believe this recording will be useful to understand this lecture. Uh, so let us meet online again for Thursday. Uh, uh, and because this is also going to be more intensive uh, problem. It's more, it will be easier or useful if I record this also as we go to this example. So let us plan to meet online on Thursday. And uh, any questions? Okay, let me just uh, write down your names uh, for attendance and then you can leave. Andra Robinson, Joseph Caleb, and then Tom, and then who else is this here? Uh, and my aunt Kevin, and then. I think I have everybody wants. So it's like nine of them here and Godric there. All right. Uh, so we'll stop with this and meet again online on Thursday. Uh, okay. So stay safe in this line and, uh, and I see you again.